Pterosaurs, theropods bigger than cars, and giant herbivores that could eat entire planes. We're talking about the largest reptiles that ever lived. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. A little bit of housekeeping. Thanks everyone for subscribing. It was recently our five year birthday at Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Thank you guys so much. Let's just get right into the list. And of course, we're talking about dinosaurs here and there are debates, oh, are dinosaurs actually reptiles? The answer is yes, but there's gonna be some conflicting information. We're going off of bones or fossilized remains from millions of years ago, tens of millions of years ago. So I'm doing my best here. If I mispronounce something, feel free to make fun of me in the comments. Let's start with the biggest land-dwelling carnivore to ever exist. Spinosaurus is number five. Spinosaurus, so imagine a Tyrannosaurus that looked way derpier, way derpier. These are, they have these weird faces that were long but kind of squishy looking and they have this sail or maybe a hump on their back. Again, we don't really know what they look like. We're just going by fossils. And these guys lived from 95 to 70 million years ago. So this is the late Cretaceous period, which we're going to talk about quite a few dinosaurs from this time period. Now we're talking about a dinosaur that was probably able to walk on two legs, just like a Tyrannosaurus, just like you'd, you'd think about seeing in Jurassic Park. But of course, funnier looking in my opinion. These animals, absolutely stunning creatures likely. We don't really know. Did they have feathers? Were they a scale type creature? It's still out. The jury is still out on that. However, just imagine this giant animal that's 20 tons, 20 tons, fumbling around on two legs, looking for anything that it can fit in its mouth. We don't really know what their diet was, but in all likelihood, a carnivore like this would be able to eat and would choose to eat basically anything that it could overpower, and that's too many things to count. What's interesting too is this is an animal that, although 20 tons, isn't that big in comparison to some of the ones we'll talk about closer to the beginning of the list or the top of the list here. So for comparison, the biggest land-dwelling carnivore right now is a polar bear, and those animals are 1,500 pounds, give or take. Think about how much bigger 20 tons is than 1,500 pounds. It's absolutely unbelievable. Not only that, but these things might have been semi-aquatic. So if you're on land, you're not safe. If you're in the water, you're also not safe as a dinosaur. One of the coolest animals ever, Spinosaurus. Number four, the largest sea-dwelling carnivore from back in the day, we're talking about Shastasaurus. So this is a genus, so there's many different species, but the biggest species are gonna be found off of the coast of modern day California. Of course, the earth looked much different, back in the day, right? And these animals were up to 65 feet long. For comparison, a really big school bus is 45 feet. So we're talking about a bus and a half in length. This is a mid to late Triassic period dinosaur, so very different than what we came in that we talked about at number five. And of course, this animal being 75 tons, 75 tons is three, four times bigger than the Spinosaurus. Now, of course, bigger animals can live in the oceans, but we're gonna talk about animals even bigger than this. We're only at number four. You know how the blue whale is the biggest animal to ever live and they eat tiny little prey items? Well, the same sort of idea with this animal here. Their, their jaws aren't made for crushing or made for tearing flesh. It's not what you think likely when you think about animals of the deep that are prehistoric and carnivores. Now, the fact that these giant animals aren't around anymore kind of stinks, but you know what doesn't stink? My truck, thanks to today's sponsor, Drift. Let me tell you, this month's scent was so good. We're talking about cabana. Toasty coconut, cedar wood, bergamot, sea salt. This is the cat's pajamas and by far my favorite one so far. Drift creates air care products for your car and your home. And all the materials they use are sustainable and their scents are made with natural, essential, and fragrance oils. And their car products are nine to $15, so it's super affordable. I said earlier it's my favorite one so far. That's because I get a new one every single month. That's what's cool about car fresheners is that you can get them as a subscription. First, you receive a starter kit with a clip and a scent, and then you can get a monthly refill because they recommend that you change every 30 days or so. The best part is their scent of the month, which features a new limited edition scent. And they're inspired by the season. So Cabana matches the season that we're in today. And this is the best way in my opinion so that you don't go nose blind or have some sense of nose blindness where everything smells the same. You don't really appreciate the scent anymore. So I change every 30 days. And their subscriptions are flexible. You can change your scent choice, your delivery frequency, or cancel your subscription at any time. Pure ingredients, crafted in the US, 
thoughtful design. That's why I love this company. So make sure you use coupon code WWR55 for 55% off at Drift. That's less than $5 for your first month. That's the link in the description below and use code WWR55 for 55% off. Number three, Quetzalcoatlus. I'm doing my best with pronunciation here. These are the biggest flying animals ever. These are pterosaurs. Beautiful, big animals, I'd imagine. So just imagine these animals flying around, almost blocking out the sun because they're so freaking big. Late Cretaceous period, 68 million years ago. You look up and you see a bunch of these. Now it's not totally known if these animals would be in groups, flocks, I guess you'd say, if it was a bird, which it's not, it's a reptile, but birds are rep Anyway, we're not getting into that today. And these things likely able to eat anything that they choose. Maybe, that was just a skink falling, don't worry about the sound. We actually don't know. In fact, because these animals are so big and there's estimates that maybe they were 500 pounds, 550, or maybe they were 180 pounds, we don't actually know. We know their wingspans were about 33 feet. So we're talking almost a school bus, okay? 33 freaking feet, that's freaking huge. The biggest birds today are nowhere near that size. So this animal, maybe it was flightless. If those estimates that it was 400, 500 pounds or more, likely they can't have any powered flight. It's just not possible. Physics doesn't allow that to happen. So in that case, you're, they're likely going to be land dwelling animals, which means they're going to be flightless and they're going to be picking things up off the ground or because they live in areas with lots of water, maybe they were like a stork and they were kind of poking that very long, sharp beak into bodies of water and taking crustaceans and things like that. The other theory is that maybe they're a scavenger. This is an animal that would scavenge on big giant dinosaurs, ones that we'll get to in a little bit here actually. There's other, other theories that if they were lighter, maybe they would soar and maybe that these would be modern day skimmers where they go over the surface of the lake and they use those long necks and those long beaks to have aquatic animals that are on the surface of the, the water, the lake, the stream, wherever they are and kind of skim them into their face, kind of like a pelican would do. Either way, it's a long toothless jaw. We don't know if they flew. We don't know if they were land dwelling creatures, but either way, the largest maybe flying creature to ever exist. Number two, Futilognosaurus. I think I got that one pretty close. Now imagine this animal, Everybody knows what a long neck is from Land Before Time. Also, shame on Land Before Time. The remake, really? That's what you're gonna make them look like? Can we Sonic the Hedgehog these people and make them look like the actual... Di like, this is... I could go on for 10 minutes about how upset I am. Anyway, Land Before Time, everyone saw a long neck, right? That's not what this is, but it's a very similar looking creature. That's what we think from the skeletal remains that we can find. Likely from a warm tropical environment. This is 87 million years ago, late Cretaceous period. So there's gonna be a lot of animals that you probably know or dinosaurs you probably recognize from the same period of time. And this is an herbivore. So this is an animal that's not gonna be eating meat or crustaceans. This is likely an animal that's probably going to be grazing because we think they came from the plains. So what a modern day plain would look like, that's what we think these animals are from. Although there are logs that are petrified and kind of in the same area, same sort of moment in time. So maybe there were small or short trees, but likely these are grazers that are gonna be covering vast swaths of land, likely in groups, and they're gonna be grazing and migrating so that they can have enough food. Cause these are giant animals that are gonna eat a lot of vegetation. Now this is mar modern day Argentina where these animals are found. They weren't even found until the, uh, to the 2000s. I think it was 2000 exactly. And then described in 2007, 92 feet, 50 tons. This is a ginormous animal. This animal is so big because we know they hung out near streams and rivers and things like that. We think that it's likely if one of these animals were to die, it could dam a river or stream, a small river or a stream for long enough that it created pockets where small marine life could form and breed. So we're talking about these animals were so big they could change the ecosystem if they were to fall and die over a stream. Okay, okay, let's get to the biggest animal, the biggest dinosaur to ever live. Of course, not the biggest animal to ever live, that's a blue whale, I'll say that again. I'm talking about Mariaponosaurus. This is an animal that was so large. The tail was larger than basically every animal on the planet that walks on land today. The neck was longer than basically every animal that walks on land today. The biggest dinosaur, the biggest reptilian of all time and it's not even close. We're talking about the length of eight school buses. Imagine eight school buses. 
That's how long this animal was from the tip of its nose to the end of its tail. 190 feet, 150 tons. Think about how much that is. A blue whale can weigh about 200 tons. We're talking about three quarters of the weight of the biggest animal ever. And this isn't a land-dwelling animal we're talking about. This is likely the largest land-dwelling animal to ever exist. Now this is kind of interesting because there's a lot of debate on this one. This animal or the remains were found in 1870. This is during the bone wars when dinosaurs were kind of a new concept, right? This is not a very long that archeology span was even a thing in terms of dinosaur bones. So the man who found this animal in the, 19, the 1870s rather, kind of shipped it to his buddy's house to look at and then we don't know where the bones are anymore. There was one vertebrae and one piece of a femur, and that's where we're getting the proportions for this dinosaur, and we don't know where it is anymore. And in 1994, we went back to the same place where we found them, and we looked using technology now, ground-penetrating technology for more bones, so we've never found more. So did this thing even exist in the first place, or was it exaggerated? Because again, this is a very competitive time to find the biggest, most amazing dinosaur, when dinosaurs are kind of a new concept all the way around. So that's the reason that I think it's maybe wishy-washy, but if this is real, if it's credible, this is the biggest animal to ever exist. There you go. Let me know, do you wanna see more videos like this or should I keep it to informal history of the other channel? There's a link in the description if you wanna see more stuff like this. As always, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. Really appreciate you guys. Thanks to Drift for sponsoring today's episode. And if you wanna be a Patreon supporter, you get videos early, discounts on merch, one-on-ones, all that and more for as little as $1 a month. I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, so that means I'll see you in the next one.